For all its beauty and splendor, the ocean can be a cruel teacher. Ice cave diving poses unique and significant dangers due to the extreme environment and inherent risks involved. Ice caves are dynamic and constantly changing. There is a risk of ice collapse or cave-ins which can trap or injure divers. Unpredictable shifts in the ice structure can occur, causing blockages or entrapment. Due to these inherent dangers, ice cave diving requires advanced training, specialized equipment, meticulous planning and experience in cave diving techniques. But even the prepared can fall victim to this hostile environment. Click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. Antarctica, often referred to as the White Continent, is the southernmost continent on Earth. Antarctica is located at the Earth's southernmost extremity, surrounding the South Pole. It is almost entirely located within the Antarctic Circle, which experiences long periods of continuous daylight in summer and darkness in winter. Antarctica is the fifth largest continent, covering an area of approximately 14 million square kilometers or 5.4 million square miles. It is larger than Europe and almost twice the size of Australia. Antarctica is the coldest place on Earth with average winter temperatures ranging from negative 40 degrees in the interior to around negative 14 degrees along the coast. The continent is characterized by its polar desert climate with extremely low precipitation and little vegetation. Antarctica is covered by a vast ice sheet known as the Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is up to 4.8 kilometers or 3 miles thick in some areas. It contains about 90% of the world's ice and approximately 70% of the planet's fresh water. The ice sheet holds an immense volume of ice, contributing to the global sea level. Antarctica remains one of the least explored and most pristine regions on Earth, attracting scientists, explorers, and adventurers from around the world who are captivated by its unique beauty and scientific potential. For Jill Heinerth, her Antarctica adventure would be horrific. Jill Heinerth is a renowned Canadian cave diver and underwater explorer who has made significant contributions to the field of diving and exploration. She is considered one of the greatest divers in history. Jill Heinerth was born in Canada and grew up with a love for water and adventure. Jill's diving career began in the 1980s when she became a certified scuba diver. She quickly developed a passion for cave diving, a challenging and specialized form of diving that involves exploring underwater caverns. Over the years, she honed her skills and gained extensive experience in cave diving. Jill's expeditions have provided valuable insights into the geology, biology, and hydrology of underwater caves. In addition to her diving and exploration work, Jill is an accomplished photographer and filmmaker. Her stunning underwater photographs and documentaries have been featured in various publications and media outlets, allowing the world to witness the beauty and complexity of underwater caves and ecosystems. Jill Heinerth's exploration career spans various parts of the world. She has explored and documented underwater caves in Mexico, the Bahamas, Australia, China, and other countries. Her expeditions have taken her to remote and challenging environments, where she has made significant discoveries and contributed to scientific research. But one dive in 2001 would be Jill's more infamous expedition. B-15, an enormous iceberg, was one of the largest ever recorded. It had calved off the Ross Ice Shelf, a massive floating ice sheet, and had been drifting in the Southern Ocean for years. News of the gargantuan B-15 iceberg had reached Jill's ears, and its sheer size and untapped potential fascinated her. The iceberg had calved off the Ross Ice Shelf years ago, a colossal event that birthed a floating island of ice measuring over 4,200 square miles, an area larger than the state of Connecticut. The thought of exploring this gargantuan iceberg brimming with secrets and wonders waiting to be uncovered ignited a fire within Jill's adventurous soul. So in 2000, Jill wanted to pitch a project to explore the iceberg. She had been researching satellite photos of a crack slowly opening up. As she was getting close to making the pitch to National Geographic, the largest moving object on our planet broke away from Antarctica. Nobody had ever attempted to cave dive inside an iceberg. When the B-15 broke away from the Ross Ice Shelf and started to make its journey north, it started breaking into pieces along fractures and crevasses, and Jill hypothesized she would be able to exploit and swim inside to find tunnels within the ice and tunnels beneath the iceberg where it had sort of tripped up on the seafloor. 
When we pitched our project to National Geographic, they said, wow, there are caves inside of icebergs? And we said, hell yeah, there are caves inside of icebergs. But the truth was, we didn't know. We figured that if this great crack had broken this piece off the ice sheet, then there had to be other cracks. It was simply a hypothesis, she said. Preparations for the expedition were meticulous and exhaustive. Accompanied by husband and expert diver Paul Heinerth and underwater cinematographer Wes Skiles, the team had to consider the extreme conditions they would face. Bone-chilling temperatures, treacherous ice formations, and the constant threat of shifting landscapes. They procured state-of-the-art diving equipment, including submersibles designed to withstand the intense pressures and cold temperatures of the Southern Ocean. As the team prepared for their journey, Jill immersed herself in research about the iceberg's formation, its geological composition, and the potential hazards they might encounter. She knew that this expedition was not just about personal exploration, it was an opportunity to contribute to scientific knowledge. The day of departure finally arrived. The team set sail from a research station on the Braveheart to the coast of Antarctica, cutting through the icy waters. The vast expanse of the Southern Ocean stretched out before them, a stark reminder of the isolation and remoteness that awaited them. Jill stood on the deck, her eyes fixed on the distant horizon. She felt a mixture of excitement and trepidation, knowing that the journey ahead would test her skills, resilience, and mental fortitude like never before. The frozen depths of the B-15 iceberg beckoned to her, calling her to unravel its mysteries and witness its hidden wonders. The moment she saw the white pinnacle of ice for the first time standing like a mountain on the ocean, her heart was racing. It was beautiful. It was sculptural. She had a feeling of reverence and felt very privileged to be able to gaze upon this awe-aspiring iceberg. This ice is endangered, and she had the sense she was looking at something that would never be the same again. Preparing for the first dive into the cave, Heinerth was nervous for Paul and Wes, as this was their first ice dive. This was the coldest dive either of them had ever been on. Nevertheless, the group entered the Zodiac and motored toward the enormous glacier. They pulled up to a little bay near the iceberg they called Patience Camp. Wes jumped in and water started pouring into his suit. He wanted to shoot one minute of footage so he could see what his new camera would produce. One minute is dangerous. I mean, you very, very quickly lose the ability to manipulate your hands or operate or even think straight. By the time he'd shot a minute of footage, he was almost incapacitated. They pulled him out hastily and rushed him back to the Braveheart, stripped him down of his cold, wet clothes, and covered him with a sleeping bag to warm up. They were all very experienced cave explorers, but nothing could prepare them for the bone-chilling waters of Antarctica. Heinerth was familiar with all of the issues that could happen to their gear because of the ultra-cold water, but didn't really understand the environment they were going to put themselves into in these iceberg caves. When they decided to do their first dive inside an iceberg, Jill describes it as exciting but very nervous. Wes, still recovering from his ordeal, stayed back along with the first mate. They motored back to the bay in the Zodiac. Jill and Paul rolled off the boat into slushy, chunky water, into the icy depths of an enormous iceberg in Antarctica. When you first jump into the water, you get an immediate bang, a salt like an ice cream headache from the water hitting your face. And you take a few very quick, deep breaths in order to knock back the cold. And dropping your face in the water, the first thing you see is this mixing slurry of slush and melting fresh water mixed with the salt water. And it's almost impossible to focus. And then you have to sort of push that aside in the little chunks of ice and then slowly descend down, dropping into this unknown, Heinerth said. Jill and Paul descended down a deep crevasse in the iceberg. The fissure was deep, but the duo continued down into the darkness until they came upon the sea floor. It was about 130 feet to the floor, deeper than they wanted to dive in Antarctica. But there at the bottom, as she turned to her right, was a passage. They were now in an environment that nobody had seen before. The ice around them was blue and white and clear, but the sea floor was red and orange and yellow. The contrast was stunning. It was covered with a shag carpet of filter feeding organisms, little Christmas tree shaped worms, and organisms likened to miniature palm trees wafting in the current. And then, all of a sudden, there were isopods, something between a spider and a lobster, about the size of a hand, and they started raining down from cracks over their head 
and crawling along the floor and hitting the camera and landing on Jill's shoulder. It was like horror story material, she said. As they swam deeper and deeper into the iceberg, there were also strange cracks and pops and groans from the ice. It was moving, it was shifting, it was changing. And at one point, a very deep and loud groaning vibration sounded. Heinerth felt it all the way through her toes. When they finally turned around on that dive and worked their way back the way they came, there were big, giant pieces of ice where they had entered this cave. There was no way out through the passage. As they approached the giant blocks of ice, Jill and Paul searched for a way around and through them and slowly, bit by bit, found a way out. But the duo had to hang in the water about 20 feet deep and readjust their body to the surface pressure. She saw Wes and Matt, the first mate, above on the boat, standing and high-fiving. Bewildered by their celebration when she resurfaced, they told her the iceberg calved and a big chunk of ice fell off and closed the doorway, causing a big wave that almost capsized the Zodiac. It was terrifying, and the whole time they were waiting not knowing if Jill and Paul were alive or dead. They knew that there was no way to mount a rescue, and all they could do was wait. By the next day, I thought, okay, I know more than I did yesterday. We're going to give it another try. It's still guesswork, and it's still a risk, but I guess at that moment I felt it was a risk worth taking, Heinert said. The entrance looked stable. So again, Jill and Paul Heinert descend down into the darkness inside the iceberg. In the ocean, you have significant tidal exchanges, but there are a lot of things that are happening around an iceberg. As it's melting, you get fresh water dropping into salt water, and that creates up currents and down currents. So there are a lot of environmental factors at play, none of which Jill and her team could have predicted because nobody had ever done something like this before. Cave diving and freezing water through an iceberg. They reached the ocean floor and photographed the organisms they encountered. This is when the current picked up. It was getting stronger by the minute, and suddenly it was racing. I remember sort of digging my hand into the sea floor to stop myself from rushing forward. It felt like dough, and my whole body kind of cartwheeled around my hand, Jill said. They tried to turn back towards the exit, but couldn't swim strong enough to move forward. The current had them. They looked at each other as they realized they were being sucked inside the iceberg. But they saw a blue light in the distance. There was another exit. And in a very quick decision, Paul and Jill decided to go with the flow and go towards the other exit. And with the current, the duo drifted, helpless, and at the mercy of the iceberg. Luckily, they were able to reach the exit and believed they were out of harm's way. But when Jill broke the surface, all she could see was ice. It was too tall to see over it. She couldn't see the boat. My heart just hit my stomach. I felt like a gnat on the back of the planet. Time gets so compressed and takes on a strange nature when you're scared. When you think there's a possibility you might die and everything's out of your control. I'm not sure if it was 15 minutes or half an hour, but I was getting cold. I was shaking when suddenly I heard something. And what had happened is the current had knocked the boat off its anchorage just as it had flushed us through the iceberg and they were pulling up the anchor to reset it. In the process of that chain being yanked up onto the boat, the boat moved, and Jill saw a small glimpse of the stern swing around the edge of the vertical side of the iceberg. Oh, there they are, she said. She heard Wes's voice in the distance. Is that Jill? She described it as the sweetest sound she have ever heard. They were slowly able to move the Braveheart towards Jill and Paul and out of the freezing water. At this point, Jill Heinerth and Paul made two dives down to the seafloor through the iceberg. And both times, disaster struck but were able to navigate the ordeal and survive. Nevertheless, Jill Heinerth wanted to make one final dive as they felt there was still unfinished business in the iceberg. On the final dive inside Ice Island, Wes had decided he would join the two. The images Paul and Jill brought back were so compelling that he wanted a crack at taking pictures with the best camera they had. Again, Jill Heinerth and her partners are on the sea floor and made their way inside the iceberg. And again, the current had picked up as the day before. Jill turns to Wes and Paul and indicates that it's time to turn around and go. But as they wheeled around, Jill realized they might not be able to get out this time. They drove their hands into the sea floor but weren't making any progress forward. All of her muscles were shaking as she was pulling with every bit of energy she had to move forward. But her attempts were fruitless against the strong current. 
Jill was leading. Paul was behind her. Wes was losing ground. And he yelled out, help me with the camera. Paul dropped back to help Wes. Heinrich was angry at the two. Screw the camera, we might die, she yelled. Surprisingly, the trio managed to get to the iceberg entrance. But then, they had a dire realization. The current was still very strong and were unable to ascend. So I looked around, I thought, what are we going to do? How are we going to climb these walls? It's just ice. It's slippery. I touch the wall, and it just slides down. And then I remembered these little ice fish that we'd been studying that were about the size of my thumb. And they were living in these burrows inside the ice, and I thought, climbing holds. I could jam a finger into that hole, and maybe I can have enough grip that I can pull my way up and get back towards the surface that was still 130 feet over our heads. And that's what they did. Inch by inch, digging their fingers in the tiny holes, the group made their way all the way up to the surface and back onto the boat. Jill remembers feeling a sense of relief when she got back to the boat. Mother Nature has given us our final warning, she said. But even then, she wanted one more dive and plan go down again the next day. So they prepped their equipment and planned their dive over a meal. But then they heard screams on top, so they dropped everything and ran up onto the deck. And there was their iceberg, the cave that they had just been inside of, breaking into pieces, heaving up in the sea, and sending these giant waves towards the Braveheart. The whole square mile of ice they'd just been inside of was breaking apart and dissolving into the sea. I was just standing there, gobsmacked on the ship's rail. I realized that if we had been in the water, we'd be dead. But I do know that it was important. It was important for us to go and document that environment and everything living around it. And I'm glad to have had that experience and glad to even have had those brushes with death that made me a better, safer diver in the future. Back on the support vessel, Jill reflected on her incredible journey into the depths of the B-15 iceberg. She knew that this dive would become an essential chapter in her legacy, inspiring others to embrace the spirit of exploration and foster a deep connection with the natural world. With each discovery, she reaffirmed her belief that there was always more to explore and that the vastness of our planet would forever hold secrets waiting to be unveiled by those brave enough to dive into the unknown. When we came home and tried to tell our story, most people just thought we were insane. How could you do that? How could you go in over and over and over again? And boy, you were lucky, you're an idiot. But for me, it was so worth it to have that experience, to document a place that maybe no one will ever see again. Cave diving presents various inherent dangers and risks due to the challenging and unique environment it entails. Surviving a cave diving incident requires a combination of preparedness, training, equipment, and the ability to stay calm under pressure. Ensure you have appropriate and well-maintained equipment specific to cave diving. This includes redundant systems for critical gear like dive lights, dive computers, dive reels, and breathing gas supply. Redundancy allows for backup in case of equipment failure. Thoroughly plan your dives, including studying the cave system, creating a dive plan, and setting personal limits. Be aware of potential risks and hazards within the cave, including areas of poor visibility, tight squeezes, and potential entanglement points. Always dive with a reliable buddy or team and establish clear communication signals or systems before entering the cave. Familiarize yourself with emergency procedures specific to cave diving, such as gas sharing techniques, lost line protocols, and managing entanglement situations. Practice these procedures regularly to reinforce muscle memory and response. Stay calm and composed during stressful situations. Panic can worsen an incident and impair judgment. Focus on problem solving, utilizing your training and experience to assess the situation and make rational decisions. Always maintain an adequate reserve of breathing gas. This includes planning for the dive's duration and considering potential delays or emergencies that may require extended time underwater. Be aware of your own limitations and never exceed your training or comfort level. If conditions or circumstances exceed your capabilities, choose to abort the dive and prioritize safety. Very critical information so you can avoid an outdoor disaster.